Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is your truly TJ Jones. And um, as you can see, I'm at home right now. But um, I just wanted to talk a little bit of some Saints news. Um, I just uh, read an article um, talking about uh, Saints defensive end Carl Granderson, the unrestricted uh, free agent that the Saints signed. Um, he got sentenced to six months in jail, man. That was a shock right there, I'm pretty sure. Everybody knew who that nation, nobody expected that, man. I know I didn't. Um, I heard about um, he had a little bit of a checkered pass. That was the reason why he went undrafted. Um, he was a guy who had a lot of promise, high motor, um, could have easily probably would have been like a fourth or fifth round pick if he probably um, didn't run into any type of trouble. But now he's looking at about six months in jail. Um, it's very unfortunate, man. I think that the Saints were really looking forward to possibly seeing if he can contribute to the team. And if you don't know what happened, um, when he was at the University of Wyoming called Grandison, um, he was uh, accused of uh, touching um, a, a female student. And uh, he got into some trouble with that. And um, apparently uh, the Saints were okay with it because they thought maybe he was going to get a, what they call a plea deal. And what he was going to get was, um, I think, maybe like a year of uh, unsupervised probation. And he would have to complete uh, some kind of mental illness training or something like that. You know, I, I don't know. But apparently the judge, when he went into the courtroom today, she had other things in mind. She ended up sentencing him, sentencing him to six months in jail. And then and once he get out, he has to uh, do a year of probation. Man, it's it's crazy man you know because on one hand you know i know we sometimes we look at these athletes and um you know we look at some of these stories and stuff like that and we do you know think that some of these athletes feel like they just above the law you know they feel like because they are successful and people are cheering for them each and every week they feel like you know they can just do anything but that's not how it works man you know i mean you go out there, you perform at a high level, but you still have to be, um, you know, a, a very, you know, calm, cool, collected individual in society, man. You can't be out here just acting reckless just because you worth millions upon millions of dollars. I mean, Carl Grandison wasn't, but I'm pretty sure on the campus of the University of Wyoming, he was looked at pretty highly. Um, Man, it's just sad, man. I mean, six months in, in, in jail, I mean, we already know what that is, right? I mean, it's six months right, in an NFL season, right? So we know he's not going to play this year. Um, the Saints probably are going to cut him. Um, probably going to cut him, end up getting, you know, somebody else to roster, roster spot, getting them an opportunity to go out there and do what they're supposed to do. Abel, yeah, they say we don't need him on our team. Yeah, man, I agree, man. You know, I mean... I really, I really didn't know that much about him. I mean, I, I read the story and all that kind of stuff, and I know that he was pretty good. And I went back and I watched some highlights. And the dude, he pretty good, man. He got a high motor, I must say, man. You know, I mean, he, he he was one of those guys, man. He was all over the field at the University of Wyoming. So he would have got drafted pretty high if he ain't fall into any trouble. But, I mean, I'm looking forward to some some of those other players, man. Some of these guys that I know – uh, that's been in the same uniform for a couple of years to step up. I mean, I'm interested to see players like Trey Hendrickson. I mean, what is he going to do? I mean, a guy who uh, shows flashes, man, ever since he came to the New Orleans Saints organization. Will he be able to take that next step? I mean, um, Marcus Davenport, man, somebody else that has been plagued with the injury bug, you know, shows signs. I mean, we've seen the Minnesota Viking primetime game, and we've seen the Washington Redskins primetime game. We've seen Marcus Davenport go out there handle up on his business. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see some of these guys. I want to see uh, some of these guys that I want to, you know, take that extra step, man. I think somebody like Carl Grandison, I mean, if he would have uh, made the Saints team and made some noise, it probably would have shocked all of us because nobody knew who he was. It's unfortunate, man. So hopefully this young man can go out here, man, get his life together. You know, um, I, I – it's hard for me to say, man, on, on one hand, I understand what the judge was trying to do. Maybe the judge, it felt like, you know, she had to make an example out, out of this guy. You know, I can understand that, but it's unfortunate that, I mean, he had opportunity of a lifetime. Just think about that, man. Think about all of these players that 
had opportunity to play in college, probably graduated, didn't get the opportunity to go to the National Football League, didn't get the opportunity to go out there and, and practice and make a team or get signed by a team. They wish they could have opportunity like that, but um, he didn't, man. He, he squandered that opportunity. It, it's sad. It's real sad, man. But once again, man, you can't just look at yourself and be like, man, I'm I'm – I'm rich, I'm successful, man. I can drive the car this fast. I can touch whoever I want to. You can't do that, man. You got to go out here and you got to make sure that you're a law-abiding citizen. And, um, man, Carl Granderson, once again, sentenced to six months. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Drew Brees now. Um, Drew Brees, um, he was uh, part of the SB Awards. Um, it happened um, on uh, Thursday. Uh, no, not Thursday, Wednesday, excuse me. And um, he received the uh, the record-breaking uh, moment of the year um, when he became the NFL's all-time leading passer. And um, I posted the video of Drew Brees' acceptance speech of him receiving his SB for the you know for that moment. And uh, you know you got to say that Drew Brees is a class act. You know I, I mean the day number nine hangs up his jersey for the last time, we in the Who That Nation. Man, we're going to miss something, man, for real. You, there's only one Drew Brees. And I'm not even just talking about just what he does on the field. I'm just talking about how much this guy means to the community, man. I've I never seen anything like this, like a guy who basically just comes in. I mean, he can easily just go up here and just be as arrogant as Aaron Rodgers, or he can just be, you know, as cocky as a Brad Fubb was, man. I mean, putting up all these monster numbers. But this man is just as humble as he wants to be. I mean, family-oriented. The first thing he said, man, he, th he thanked his wife. And he, and he wasn't even just excited about receiving the award. He was more excited about his sons uh, being a part of the festivities, man, to be able to for his sons to hang out with players like Zion Williamson, the first pick overall for the Pelicans, and, and, and seeing his sons take pictures with Ty Gurley. Man, this dude, like... Man, what a classy guy, man. And um, it just made me go to his uh, social media page to look at more pictures. And I didn't even know this, man. This, this shows you how how classy Drew Brees is. Drew Brees took a, a, a trip to Kenya, man. And he uh, went and he uh, helped volunteer at this, uh, this center for people that have uh, disabilities. And normally you'll see players like this, man. They'll be trying to do Instagram live and they'll be on facebook live yeah i'm out here in kenya y'all you know doing my part i ain't even know that about drew Brees. if you didn't go on his page you wouldn't even know i mean the dude is just out here doing all kind of things man just out here building communities and and helping out over, over abroad man like what a classy guy and that's why i say to a lot of people man we gotta appreciate this i know um people in the who that nation we get spoiled man we see them throwing for all these yards we see the Saints winning the game. I mean, we dancing in our living rooms, man. We saying who that. We got the umbrella in the house, even though it's bad luck. <laughs> and we celebrate, man, during the Benson Boogie. May Tom Benson rest in peace. But, man, it is a blessing to watch this guy play, man, for real. Like, it, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. Because once he hangs it up, man, I, I think that we – are going to get that reality, man, that everybody is not Drew Brees. And I mean, I know we're all counting on Teddy Bridgewater to come up and be his successor, but we don't know that for sure, man. And even if he do, man, you know, I, I just can't see him putting up the type of numbers Drew Brees put up. I think the whole offense is going to change. And Drew Brees, I mean, the guy just, man, just a classy dude, man. Just, just a straight classy dude to speech. I mean, it, you, it was just oozing um, humility, man. I mean, it was just a guy that was just glad to be a part of the moment. And it seems like to me like Drew Brees isn't even playing for himself anymore. He's like he, he's playing to, for his kids to watch him play. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's like on a whole different level, you know. And I, I, I kind of can understand where Drew Brees is coming from, man. You know, um, I had my first child uh, about uh, two months ago. And it, it's just amazing, man, to watch your kids, man, and just watch, you know, every single day they grow. And, 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 and you know what I'm saying? It just puts your life into perspective, you know. And I'm pretty sure that's how Drew Brees is. I mean, 
when it was just him and Britney, uh, you know, rolling around, you know what I'm saying, doing all that philanthropy work and all that. And he was a quarterback in the Saints. I'm pretty sure it was cool. But to actually have your kids to go into the locker room and hang out with the players and it's just the best thing to them, it puts a smile on your face. So, once again, congratulations to Drew Brees on winning that SB. Uh, you know, what a classy dude. I, I can't say that enough. Uh, I think they still need to pay Michael Thomas. I'm going to keep on saying that. I don't know what the problem is. I mean, training camp just around the corner, and we still didn't hear nothing. I mean, it seemed like negotiations and cooled off. I don't know what's up with that, but they need to go ahead and heat up. Let's get this man paid so we can go ahead and – not be tiptoeing through training camp because um, I, I said this before and I said it again, I will not blame Michael Thomas if he does not show up for training camp. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't want you to blame Michael Thomas for not showing up to training camp because this man deserves to get paid. I mean, this guy puts his body on the line. Just think about that, man. Just think about – if you had to put your body on the line, your body is, is your investment, you know what I'm saying, so to speak. If he goes out there, man, and, you know, come up limp, you know what I'm saying, mess around, tear something, you know, that going to give the Saints all the leverage in the world, man. And this man may not ever get paid. I don't want to switch sports on y'all, but, I mean, I feel like this is relevant. Um, if you watch basketball, you remember a player named Isaiah Thomas. No, not the one for the Detroit Pistons back in the day but the one that played for the Boston Celtics not too long ago. This guy almost was like the face of the franchise of the, of the team, man. And then, you know, he went out there, laid it all on the line for the Boston Celtics, messed around, man, messed his hip up, and he was up for like a huge contract when that happened. And now this man didn't get absolutely nothing, okay? He ain't get nothing. I mean, bouncing around the league, I'm not sure if he even in the league anymore. But just think, man, if he would have uh, sat on the bench and been like, man, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to mess up my hip. You know what I'm saying? I ain't getting my money. You know, I mean, where would he be today? he will be a lot richer than he is today. So um, don't blame Michael Thomas if he don't show up for training camp, man, because you got to look out for yourself. I mean, I've been seeing him tweeting. And, um, you know, uh, Michael Thomas, if you follow him on Twitter, I mean, he never comes out directly and says how he feels. It's always – subliminal you know what i'm saying it's always through a rap verse or something like that but you can tell um he he um is really um thinking about not showing up to training camp man and i, I don't blame him i'm sorry I, I don't blame him and i know that's not this may not be the most popular thing to say but i do not blame the man if he don't show up to training camp and and don't be around here talking about michael thomas selfish and Michael Thomas, he need to be thanking the Lord that Drew Brees is quarterback. I mean, he, he he should be thankful that Drew Brees is quarterback. But, I mean, man, Michael Thomas is a different type of cat, okay? I mean, for people saying that anybody can do that with Drew Brees, I mean, everybody can't do it with Drew Brees. Drew Brees can throw the ball to a person, you know what I'm saying, they can catch the ball. But some of the things that Michael Thomas can do, and, and and being a wide receiver is way, you know what I'm saying, it's way much more than just catching the ball. I mean, this, you got to be able to block. I mean, you got to be able to understand coverages and stuff like that, man. I mean, it, it's not just about pitching and catching. You know what I'm saying? Maybe if you out there, you know, on, on, on a lot or somewhere, you know what I'm saying, in a field with your friends, maybe it's just about catching the ball. But when you're a football player, man, when you can block – when a team can line you up on the outside, line you up in the slot, um, you know what I'm saying, you can understand coverages and read them really well, that's when you got something, man. So Michael Thomas is, a, is special, man, and, and I feel like it's crazy for any fan to think that anybody can put up these type of numbers with Drew Brees. And for those that think that, I mean, my question to you is, why hasn't this been done by just anybody? You know, why, why, I mean, why is it that Michael Thomas, for the first three seasons, he has had more receptions than any other player in NFL history? Not just for the New Orleans Saints, but NFL history. Now, if it was just um, anybody can do it, I mean, why hasn't, you know, anybody else that come through the door done what he's done? I mean, I'll leave that up to you. But uh, anybody got any questions for me, man? I see a few people on, on live. You know, if you got any questions concerning the Saints, 
I'll take them right now, man. But I want to say thank you to Abel and uh, uh, Tamara and John and Christy. Thank y'all for uh, looking at the uh, the live video here. You know, like I said, I'm at home. I'm chilling right now. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I did want to talk about Carl Granderson because it's, it's a big story. And um, when I get a little bit more details, I, I make sure that I put a video out about that. Um, but besides that, besides Drew Brees winning the SB and Michael Thomas there and I get paid, Carl Granderson. I don't really see anything else I could talk about. I mean, training camp is going to take place in Metairie again. I think that's a good look. I'm so glad that they're not going back to West Virginia because I feel like that was a curse, you know, when they was out there because <laughs> it seemed like they were just soft of the cotton nail tissue, man, like when they was out there. I guess because they had, you know, I, all that, all those luxuries and stuff like that out there in West Virginia, I feel like it was a curse. So, I, and you notice, like, ever since they came back to Metairie for training camp, I mean, they've been making the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they're they over when they go to West Virginia. And for the last couple of years they've been in Metairie, man, they've been in the playoffs. So, I guess Metairie makes you tough. I mean, I, I know how it is, especially being out in that high sun in New Orleans. Bruh. You know what I'm saying? I know for all my New Orleans uh, viewers out there right now, y'all know how it is, man. Y'all know how hot it can be in New Orleans, man. That humidity be at 100%. Ooh, oh, that going to make somebody, that going to make you a player right there, man. That going to make you tough. <laughs> because you'll be somewhere that passed out somewhere if you're not fully hydrated, man. But I'm looking forward to training camp. Like I said, a lot of questions need to be answered. A lot of questions need to be answered, man. I'm, I'm looking to see if these guys can take a next step. I'm looking like I'm looking forward to seeing if Alex Azzalone, uh ego take it to the next level. I mean, his first year he played good, second year, I mean, he, he made some plays, but I really want to see Alex Azzalone like really let loose. And I mean, all of these young players, I mean, this is like the third season. I mean, Dennis Allen, they know the scheme, they 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 have that camaraderie. They have that chemistry. I want to see these guys go out there and perform. I want to see Marcus Williams, you know, like stop playing scared. Last season, I mean, he did an okay job, but just watching him last season, it seemed like he was playing not to make a mistake. His first season, it seemed like he was trying to make a play. But he better be careful because uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, the rookie they have out of Florida, man, this guy has so much swag. I don't know if y'all look at any of any of his interviews. I mean, he can come off a little bit brasking, brasking, um, cocky, but dude, like this dude, like I like that man. You you want a player that got a little swag, a little brash. You know what I'm saying? You want players like that because you know if they go out there, they make a mistake, they just let that stuff rub off of them. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Marcus Williams, he was playing scared. You know, I mean, I still can't get over that NFC Championship game, man, when he let the tight end Everett from the Los Angeles Rams get past him for 40 yards. And I'm looking at that play, man. I'm like, I looked at that play at least least 20 times, okay? I mean, I, I looked at that play recent just to make sure that I wasn't tripping. If you go back, I'm telling you, it's in the fourth quarter. It's right after that controversial BS call, nine call, you know, with Tommy Lee Lewis when the Los Angeles Rams got the ball. And I'm telling you, there's a play. Jared Goff rolls to his right, and he throws the ball to Everett, and I think Everett got about 40-some-odd yards on that play. Go back and watch the instant replay and look at Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams stood there and waited for Everett to catch the ball. If he would have jumped in front of Everett, he would have had that interception, and the Saints would have been in the Super Bowl. But he whiffed on that, man, I'm telling you. Like, I, I'm not tripping. I, I'm telling you, I done seen that play several times. I, I done seen that play several times. Go back and watch it. It is right after the controversial nine call, and it's the last drive of the fourth quarter for the Los Angeles Rams when Everett, when Everett made that catch. I'm telling you, go watch Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams could have jumped in front of that guy and caught an interception. But that, that comes, uh, like I said, he probably had that in the back of his mind. He didn't want that Minnesota miracle all over again because I guess he realized, man, I'm the last line of defense. If he catch this ball and I don't uh, catch the interception or I miss and he, he catch the ball, he running for a touchdown, 
look, you can't play like that, man. I think Deion Sanders uh, hit the nail on the head when he said this. He said, there's 5% of players out there, they play to make a play. He said, other 95%, they just play, you know what I'm saying, just not to mess up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be a playmaker. That's what makes you great. That's why, it will, that's why we talk about Detroit Palomalus. We talk about the Ed Reed. You know what I'm saying? Even like Bob Sanders for the Indianapolis Colts for a short period of time. Those guys were out there, they made plays. Okay, I mean, there was a couple of times where they probably, you know, made some mistakes. It was rare, but it's because these guys were so sure of themselves. You got to be sure of yourself, man. You got to have that that swag, man. You got to go out there and just lay it all on the line. And, and that's what Marcus Williams need, man. So I want to see if he's going to take that extra step. I want to see him do big things in training camp, man. I want to see the defense uh, step it up. You know, I, I mean, they always starting – Early, I mean, late in the season, man. They always seem to get it together late. I want to see the defense from start to finish look good. I want to see the defense step it up, do what they need to do. You know what I'm saying? I want to see the Saints win week one. That's right. I want to see them win week one because it's been, what, about four or five years since the New Orleans Saints have won in week one. I want them to start the season off strong. I want them to, you know, Tell the NFL that y'all made a mistake and we are not going to let you take this away from us ever again. We're going to control our own destiny. We're going to put our own destiny in our own hands and y'all just going to sit back and enjoy this. I want to see Drew Brees finally win MVP because I'm tired of seeing him get snubbed. And when you have the media who already already hating on the New Orleans Saints because the Saints aren't a big market team, you know, they're always looking for a player from the Dallas Cowboys or the, or the next big thing or some young player that they can possibly put the jet pack on and, and, and shoot them up to the moon. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see Drew Brees become league MVP, man, because I'm tired of seeing Drew Brees get snubbed. That's what I want from this season. That That's exactly what I want. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's unfortunate once again about this Carl Granderson dude or whatever like that, but I don't know if he was going to play. I don't even know if he was going to make the team, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I mean, it is what it is. But I, that's what I want to see, man. Which, what do y'all want to see from the season, okay? Um, Abel says, I think our defense is going to shock some people. I'm excited for Chauncey. Look, I don't think that the defense is going to shock. I, I, I mean, the defense was already good. Like, if you look, like, towards the end of the season, you, you can slowly see the national media giving the Saints respect for their defense. I mean – they were like, like towards the end of the season, the Saints was ranked like number one in a lot of statistical categories defensively, man. Like, and it was so, it was so obvious, man. They couldn't take it away from them. So, um, I, I, I would like to see them take a, a, like I said, to start the season off strong. Like, if you notice, man, the Saints always start the season off badly. The defense always getting smoked like brisket. Burnt like a biscuit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to see that. You know, when I, I think the first game of the season when they played Minnesota, I mean, the defense was getting beat like a Persian rug. Last season, they started the season off against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Defense was getting beat like a Persian rug. I want to see these guys start the season off strong. I want to see some sacks. I want to see some linebackers flying all over the field. I want to see some cornerbacks catching some picks. I want to see the secondary in general catch some picks. I want to see some turnovers being generated. That is what I want from the Saints. I want a, I want a complete body of work. I want them to be leading in the statistical categories that they need to be leading in um, going into mid, mid in the, midway in the season. That's what I want. That's what I want from the New Orleans Saints. So, um, once again, I want to say thank you for checking out this live. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, the, the State of the Saints podcast, uh, the State of the Saints podcast on YouTube. Um, previous episodes of the podcast are available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, you can always, uh, if you haven't already, please follow the State of the Saints podcast Facebook page. Um, you know, I, I post all types of videos about the New Orleans Saints, all type of Saints news, pictures. I try to make sure I try to make sure that I give you everything New Orleans Saints. You know, anything that I find. I'm constantly looking for Saints news. I'm constantly looking for little fun articles and 
and, and things that uh, players say just to keep you entertained. I mean, because, oh, man, it's a boring part of the season, right? No basketball, man. Baseball, I'm not really a big fan of. You know, nothing, nothing against baseball. I'm just not a fan. Um, you know, th this is like the dry part of the season, man. It's like it's so boring. So you got to kind of find – um, different stories and stuff like that, man. And, and training camp is coming up, so news is really going to start picking up. Um, I'm going to be putting out a lot more videos of the New Orleans Saints. Um, you all going to see like countdowns of, you know, some of my favorite Saints of all time. Um, and also, um, I want to get your feedback on this. Um, you can always inbox me. I want you all to do this for me, okay? I want you to inbox me a Saints player. And what I do is I'll select one of the Saints players that you all select, and I'll make sure I do a video on them. And I don't care how old it is, man. I know, you know, I'm kind of, you know, young. I'm just 32 years old. But I know a lot about the Saints, man. Like this, like I was saying on my last video, like this ain't no new Saints fan in front of you right now. <laughs> this ain't no new uh, Saints fan talking to you right now, man. I've been a Saints fan since as long as I can remember. My grandmother is the biggest Saints fan ever, okay? My grandmother been watching the Saints since they first came out, you know what I'm saying? Their first season, okay? I mean, I'm talking about, like, from the first kick return for a touchdown, you know what I'm saying? Like, for from the, the expansion year of the Saints. I mean, I, I, can, I can tell you some Saints stuff now. I, <laughs> I can tell you some highs. I can tell you some lows, you know what I'm saying? I, but just go ahead and... um. Just any Saints player you can think of, man. You know, like if if it's your favorite Saints player uh, from the past or the present, you know, I would gladly do a video on on them, and you know, I'll you know talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that, and I may even tell you some facts you didn't even know about your player. Okay, so till next time, all I have to say is, who that. <laughs>